Welcome back guys. Today we are going to build ourselves a power supply unit based on this DPS 5020. You can find many different variants out there. On the image here you can see a few of them. All from 20 volt and 2 amps up to 50 volt and 20 amps. 50 volt 20 amps is quite a huge power supply and that's what I'm going to build today. So let's take a quick look at the specifications. For getting the 50 volt out, you need an input voltage of at least up to 60 volt or somewhere above 50 volt. So basically this is a buck converter that converts from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. That means that if you want 50 volt out and 20 amp out, you need to put in at least 52 or 53 volt in and 20 amp in. The output power range is up to 1000 watts and that's a lot. So if you are doing it that high, you need to consider the heat that is created inside this unit. So first of all, I got this box here sent from Banggood. So I say thank you for that. It was free and I know what this work around, so it's not really a review as such. It's a nice little box for this application and I will be assembling this today and show you guys how that is done. There is one thing that you need or should be doing and that is regarding the fan here. Because this fan is always on and it is very very noisy. The power supply I'm going to use is this one I have here. This is the 50 volt 20 amp version. So it's actually one of the highest they have. This one was bought by me so it's not supplied by anyone. This one is not uh, ready for hooking up to the computer and that's a little bit of a shame but when I bought this one that version did not exist. I don't have much to power it currently so that will be another project but today we're going to tackle this box. So I start with unscrewing the screws in the box to open it up. It's held by two screws from the start so it's not that complicated. And the box itself it's rather small so let's take a look at the components. This board here is for actually controlling the fan inside. It's a nice little feature that doesn't turn on the fan until you actually start the unit itself. The wires, the thick wires are a little bit stiff in my opinion. I start with inserting the screws for the fan itself and they are held together with M3 if I'm not mistaken. The power plug or the power connector is just a push in place and you're done. The input and output connectors itself for the PSU, this is the input side. They are nicely held together with some plastic pieces and some screws. Just make sure that you tie them together in a proper way, otherwise you may get a short to the chassis itself. You can of course build this DPS unit into a bigger box with the power supply itself from the start if you want. I did not do that and I'm using this unit because currently I don't have a power supply. So I have my base unit here and I will be starting to mount that to the bottom. It actually come with accessories to do it from the box side, but it was also included in the DPS itself. The screws goes nicely together and holds the PCB board in place. When that's done, I'm just inserting or pushing in place the feet on the box. Attaching the screen uh, from the outside and uh, there are two cables that goes in then they are clearly marked which one goes where It's a nice press fit and it's not a problem to get it there And uh, the wires itself or cables here I'm trying to have on the side and I will be hot gluing them into place a little bit later on Measuring the length of the wires that is going to be used and then I just go ahead and cut them um, I'm getting the outer insulation away and I'm using the actual contacts that was supplied in this box and crimping them into place. The crimper itself I have linked it in down below if you want to buy 
a unit like that and if you're interested in the actual box i have a link to banggood for that and for a dps unit i have links as well for several of them when i have crimped and uh, the things in place i also add some drink and that makes it a little bit nicer to work with i'm using my normal reflow so reflow soldering station and that one works really great for this kind of things i have linked that in down below as well uh, i'm actually going to solder the wire to the contact uh, i could have used crimped uh, th lugs as well but i prefer the solder version on them and same goes here some more heat shrink on top of it And my soldering iron have to work hard today because those wires are a little bit thicker. So it takes a little bit time to actually get them soldered. And some more heat shrink once again. And then it's just a matter of screwing the wires into the PCB board itself and they will be nicely tucked into the side. Here you see a trick that I did earlier where I actually heat the wire up a little bit and that makes it a lot easier to work with and not as stiff as it was from the beginning. The wire to the actual fan is cut off as well because I'm not using the original contact and I'm going to solder them into the PCB. And on the side you can see here the big traces where you need to connect everything up. So basically I need to get a positive to it uh, from the input. And the fan goes on the end here where the output is. This lead I attach now is actually to control this fan on and off. And it's based on the actual um, power supply when that one turns on and off. This was not included in the description for the DPS and that's, I would say, is a little bit poor, but googling it up, I found it rather fast on how to do it. Uh, attaching the board, and the board just goes in between the actual crimped lugs and the, the backside itself. It's a little bit tight in the box, it's not the most. Um, biggest box that I have seen for this purpose but when you get everything together it's a really nice fit and as you can see I also added a fuse on this end uh, there is no fuse from the beginning and I think there should be one the best option would have been to have an external fuse uh, but in this case I only had an internal fuse laying around so I used that blade fuse instead the output I do the same, I did some wires, uh, crimped the lugs and attached the wires. And just for purpose I actually did switch out to another wire because the ones included from the beginning was a little bit too short. And here you can see I am adding the hot glue and that's for actually keeping it in place. I also saw that the caps was rather loose, so I actually added some hot glue on them as well and on the wires to keep them in place. So here we have the beauty all together, uh, nicely neat tightly up and I am really happy with the result. The case goes back together again and four screws on each side. And when that's done, it's time to turn it on. In this case, I'm just powering it from a simple power supply that I had lying around. And I'm powering it up with actually powering a bulb in the side. And this is just a simple test to see that it actually works. One good thing you could use this for is actually testing fuse wire, for example, because you can easily set the voltage and the current that you want to test at. And by running this from the computer that you have the communication cable, you can actually do several tests in once without actually have to touch the unit by instead programming it on the computer. 
And as you can see here, I was up to 40, 50 watts and it works really, really great. This is actually just a 55 watt bulb and you can see it actually melting my bench into pieces. So guys, I really like this unit. Uh, it was a rather simple build, still you had to do a couple of modifications unfortunately. Um, first of all, it did not come with an inline fuse and you should have a fuse when you are working with stuff like this. Um, the wires for the main power going from the back side to the front are a little bit too short. You can fit them on this design, but I decided to go with silicon wires instead that I had lion run. Um, it is very very tight fit inside but it's doable but as you saw I did add a couple of clicks of hot glue for instance to stabilize pastors and it's needed because they were very very loose. The fan in the back are a little bit noisy um, you can add a thermistor or something that regulates it I did not do it in this one here, I might do it in the future, but currently that's not an uh, issue for me. The description to assemble the fan and everything, it's not good, I wouldn't say. Uh, it's lacking some details, but I figured it out and got it working. Uh, with that said, it's a very very nice little unit. Uh, I don't have a proper power supply yet. I need to figure out to get a 48 volt or 50 volt. 10 amp power supply to power this beast. It's a nice unit and I think I will be using it a lot as soon as I get the power supply for it. So I want to thank you guys for watching and if you haven't subscribed already to my channel do that and click the link below. If you want to support me there are links in the description and if you want to buy this device um, be aware of that the case was sponsored by Banggood and uh, the device inside I bought myself. So the case will be linked to Banggood uh, and if you want to buy it uh, go through there and you'll get a very very decent case for it. It's a small case. Uh, so once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.